Delayed puberty is an important problem that needs to be evaluated in a timely fashion in girls. Particularly because while delayed puberty is less common in girls compared to boys, it is often more likely to be associated with a pathological cause. Even then, it is important to understand situations wherein actual evaluation is required and don't cause unnecessary anxiety as part of workup is concerned. Just to elaborate as to how unnecessary workup would cause concern, I recently had this 13-year-old girl who presented with complaints of delayed puberty. Evaluation showed that she had stage 1 breast development, no pubic hair growth and ultrasound was done by the pediatrician showed no uterus. So it was a shocking condition. They went on to further evaluate the child and found that both LH and FSH levels were undetectable. Thinking of a central cause, they did an MRI which showed a pituitary adenoma. At that point, they became absolutely baffled and advised karyotype. So what could really cause a situation in a girl who looks like a hypogonadotropic hypogonadism with a small pituitary adenoma and there is no uterus and ultrasound? There can't be anything more devastating as far as diagnosis is concerned. But if you look carefully in this picture, you will see that this 13 year of age, maybe we were too premature in terms of evaluation assessment in this situation. And when there is no estrogen to actually cause breast increase, there is no reason that there will be uterine development. And small uterine size is often associated and often missed by radiologists and reported as no uterus. LH and FSH would be appropriate for this age group. Pituitary adenomas may be incidental. So this is a entirely a physiological situation which is converted into pathology because of undue and unnecessary investigation which should all have been avoided in a girl who is just at the fringe of being defined as delayed puberty. So now we'll focus on just the key issues of when, why and how of delayed puberty. So delayed puberty is defined as with other conditions mainly in statistical terms of having onset of puberty which is beyond two standard deviation score for ethnicity. For simplicity purposes, if there is no breast development by the age of 13 years or there is inappropriate progress of puberty that is stalled puberty with no menarche happening within 5 years of thilarche or in absolute terms if there is no menarche by 16 years, one needs to be concerned about the possibility of delayed puberty requiring further evaluation and management. Now the next issue is what really causes delayed puberty. And in this regard, uh, we would need to understand that a large majority of girls, although boys have it much more commonly, still have constitutional delay of puberty in growth, which is a physiological cause, as a cause of delayed puberty. These girls will have overall delay in growth. So therefore, their height and bone age will be relayed as compared to the age. And since every aspect of growth is affected, the pubic hair growth or the pubarchy part which is actually controlled by the adrenal system is also affected. While comparatively the pathological causes would have no effect as far as growth, bone age or even the pubarchy pattern is concerned. So pubic hair assessment becomes absolutely important in the initial phase to differentiate between physiological and pathological cause of delayed puberty. Within pathological problem, the problem could actually be at the level of the ovaries, what is known as hypergonadotropic hypogonadism, or at the level of the pituitary, which is the hypogonadotropic hypogonadism. And within the pituitary problems, this could be secondary to systemic causes, what is known as functional, transient, or reversible hypogonadotropic hypogonadism, like malnutrition, celiac disease, hypothyroidism, hyperprolactinemia, or anorexia or in the setting of permanent hypogonadism, which actually means that there is a problem in the pituitary, most commonly because of a CNS insult, radiotherapy, uh, radiation infection. Rarely Kalman syndrome can also be present, although it's an X-linked disorder, can be present as far as girls are concerned. So, <clears throat> what really causes delayed puberty, if you look at this large series, it clearly shows that even in girls, 1 in 3 would be physiological. It is constitutional delay of puberty in growth, typically with delayed growth, no pubarchy, delayed bone age. Around 1 quarter would actually have hypergonadotropic hypogonadism with Turner syndrome, leading the pack associated with short stature, 
ब्राकीमेटाकापिया शील्ड चेस्ट वाइल्ड कैरिंग एंगल परमानेंट हाइपोगोनाट्रोपिक हाइपोगोनाटिज्म इज लेस कॉमन एज कंपेयर टू बॉयज एंड फंक्शनल कॉजेज आर एक्सैक्टली वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट विच शुड बी कंसिडर पर्टिकुलरली इफ देर इज माल न्यूट्रिशन डीलेड ग्रोथ एनीमिया सजेस्टिव सीलियाक डिजीज इफ देर इज कैरेक्टोरिया सजेस्टिव ऑफ हाइपर प्रोलैक्टनीमिया कोर स्किन ओवर वेट शॉर्ट स्टेचर डीलेड बोनेज इन द सेटिंग ऑफ हाइपोथरिज्म इन दैट परस्पेक्टिव so now the question comes is we know that this girl has a delayed puberty we know its cause and now we need to manage this child so the three key issues that needs to be addressed in this whole algorithm as far as delayed puberty is concerned is whether is it really a physiological or pathological cause if it's a pathology whether it's at the ovarian level or at the hypothalamic pituitary level and if it is at the hypothalamic pituitary level is it really a reversible cause or a permanent cause so the first question is whether it's really pathology the best way to look at in this regards is actually to look at growth or puberty girls who have constitutional delay of puberty and growth will have both delayed puberty delayed adrenarche will be short and delayed bone age while if you have a girl who has stage 3 pubic hair development is normal in height and the bone age is normal and still there is no progression we have to think of a pathological cause so if you go back to the first case wherein we had a girl who had no pubic hair or breast growth ultrasound show you no know, shows no uterus had low levels of lh and fsh this is a classical case of constitutional delay of puberty and growth nothing really to be done look at the bone age bone age is delayed wait and watch always in delayed puberty there is no urgency in most situations so if you have a doubt give the benefit of it to constitutional delay so that you can avoid unnecessary investigations and management can be done appropriately the second question is where is the pathology and in this regards i think it's not very difficult if you just do a fsh level whether it's basal most cases basal will be good enough you will have very high levels of fsh in hypogonadotropic hypogonadism and sometimes the anal stimulation test is required to differentiate and finally the question is once we know where exactly is the pathology so we have this 15 year old girl and anybody who has a girl like this walking into the room will rush to the diagnosis of turner syndrome she has shield chest white carrying angle webbing of neck short girl fsh more than 60 do we need to go any further many people would say that if you have a classical phenotype high fsh why do we need to go further start treatment this is what happened unfortunately with this girl and 3 years later she presented with a large abdominal mass which turned out to be a gonadoblastoma because she had a y cell line so the important thing to remember in a girl with turner syndrome is that turner syndrome is not just about gonadal failure it's about multitude of issues like kidney problems heart problems hearing problems and risk of malignancies so always all girls even if the fsh levels are high should undergo a karyotype evaluation for assessment now once we know it's hypogonadotropic hypogonadism the next issue is whether it's functional or permanent and this again we have to look at the same things the pubic hair the height and weight age it's quite similar to when we talk about evaluation of short stature whether it's a nutritional cause or a endocrine cause most functional causes are associated with malnutrition maybe it's celiac disease or anorexia in that setting the leptin levels are low and the whole kiss peptin axis is suppressed these children will be short they will have uh, less weight they may have anemia they'll be looking sick while those who have hypogonadotropic hypogonadism would be looking absolutely normal they will have normal pubic hair growth their weight height bone age will be appropriate so this is a very key factor to look at at this stage so the pointers to diagnosis in this regards is somebody has growth failure obviously think of celiac disease anosmia though rare but kalman syndrome could be a possibility in girls as well so that history has to be looked at and dysmorphic syndromes like padovelli chart syndrome bardet beetle syndrome should be considered and evaluated so now we have a 16 year old girl with stage 1 breast development and pubic hair one development short lean anemia low lh fsh this is hypogonadotropic hypogonadism 
but is it functional or is it a permanent cause now we don't have any pubic hair development the child is short lean and anemic so this is clearly a secondary cause it's basically a functional hypogonadotropic hypogonadism celiac disease is absolutely important to rule out and ttg was strongly positive in this girl again 16 year old girl with breast stage 1 but pubic hair stage is 3 so this girl cannot be constitutional delay she has good height she has good weight her lhfsh levels are low so this is most likely hypogonadotropic hypogonadism of the permanent variety all other workup cbc sgpt creatinine tsh prolactin is normal so this is a classical case of hypogonadotropic hypogonadism 17 girl, year old girl with amenorrhea and we can see that she has reasonable breast development and hardly any pubic hair growth fsh levels are high suggestive of gonadal failure so what's the possibility the most likely situation when you do a karyotype is xy and this is a classical case of androgen insensitivity syndrome presenting with breast development very sparse pubic and axillary hair they actually will have very little hyperandrogenism in the form of acne or hirsutism in their body and would look more feminine than most women and this is one situation which is a very common cause of amenorrhea and along with mullerian agenesis and turner syndrome would rank in the top 3 causes of amenorrhea in most settings and should always be considered as a possibility so how do we approach a girl with delayed puberty look at the screening investigation in the form of cbc sgpt creatinine ttg ft4 tsh blood gas electrolytes if they are all normal look at fsh if fsh levels are low think of central cause look at mri and other anterior pituitary function test if they are high think of uh, turner syndrome do a karyotype pseudo hypoparathyroidism can really present like this so look at calcium phosphorus and alkaline phosphatase and very rarely ovarian steroidogenic pathway needs to be assessed now coming back to management what happened with this girl who was diagnosed as turner syndrome was started on a very high dose of ethanol steroid which is not uncommon in gynecological practice now when you do that you run a risk of very rapid pubertal progression following which she had periods within 6 months her height breast size and uterine size were all compromised so the key recommendation is in turner syndrome don't rush with just estrogen therapy think growth hormone and you need to give gradual induction as far as puberty is concerned in most cases we advise to start around 5 to 10% of adult dose build it up over 2 years so whenever we are faced with a girl with delayed puberty there is no need to hurry especially if it's around 13 14 years of age and height and bone age and pubic hair development is all delayed constitutional delay becomes very important in even this setting pubertal induction should be gradual and not at a 